Well, hello there again. This time another video about something, well, this time it's not really that Amiga or a vintage computer related, but uh, it's about something that's a vital component for computers so you can actually see what you're doing. So first of all, this is a device which I always wanted to have. I've always seen them in action, but never been able to uh, get myself one because uh, in all the places that I've worked so far, Nobody wanted to give those away, or uh, I found some ads online and these things were pretty expensive. But it just so happens that two days ago, somebody posted an ad online and gave me well, this for free. This is one of these huge Sony uh, CCTV uh, screens that are mostly used for, uh, well, uh, just putting up cameras and seeing what's going on and this thing is just absolutely ginormous here on the back we have got a total of uh, four lines we have got line A line B line C and a RBG component connector that's uh, well of course be the line D or line 4 or whatever and if you want to know what this model exactly is here you go And uh, as you can see, since this is all CCTV stuff, you can already tell, yeah, this thing uses a B and C connectors, which I don't have, but uh, I can get myself some adapters for that. One thing that's a little bit disappointing is it only does mono audio, which uh, isn't really a problem for the vintage computers that I use, since, well, the Commodore 64 at least only has a mono audio. But the Amigas, for example, well, they use a uh, two, they use a stereo, so I would either have to combine those two ten channels or just hook up a separate speaker to this whole thing, which again isn't really a problem. And if you just want to look at this, this thing is absolutely huge. I just brought it home right now. This thing, I have no idea how much it weighs. It is really, really, really heavy. The person told me he, uh, well, it still works doesn't appear to have any kind of screen burning, which is good, so it was mostly used as a display for uh, something else and not um, constantly showing the same Im image from the video camera or cameras that it was connected to. Here on the front we have got a ton of controls and so on, and here we have got the mono speaker. And uh, this thing is also designed to slide in a rack, as you can see. We have these two handles in the front, and the whole thing can either be pushed in or pulled out of that whole assembly. Yeah, and, uh, well, getting this thing home was actually quite a fight. Because uh, it's out. I couldn't fit that in the smart car, this whole thing. It just wouldn't enter in the, uh, in the back. It wouldn't enter in the passenger seat. So I had to use, yeah, the train to uh, take it home on a ground train or metro or subway or whatever you want to call it and uh, and well luckily I didn't carry that whole thing I had something to with wheels to put it on and uh, well with 20 degrees outside this heavy thing uh, pulling around and so on that was quite exhausting also I had to carry it up some stairs and down some stairs since uh, well the person that gave it away couldn't help me with it yeah, yeah, but unfortunately I accidentally made some scratch marks uh, while I took that whole thing home. Which uh, isn't bad, but uh, yeah, it's something I was trying not to do. But uh, yeah, I couldn't... Uh, well, nothing I could do against it. By the way, this uh, big scratch mark here, that's not made by me, that is uh, from something else. No idea why. And that one on the top also. So probably the whole thing was actually sitting in a rack. I don't know. I haven't seen the whole setup. The guy just gave me the monitor and said have fun with it. And I was really happy about that. Good thing is, yep, it is also a color monitor. At first I thought of the that it was only going to be black and white, but nope. This thing does color, which is great. And since we've got a ton of options on this whole thing, as you can see right here, 
you can get a really, really good image out of these machines if I am going to use the RBG port, which of course is possible since these things, uh, well, I can just take a scrap cable and uh, yeah, scrap cable is actually nothing else than the RGB cable, I hope, and uh, see if it's possible to get a nice and good image on these, this display. I have no idea if, if, um, if I am actually going to put it on my whole uh, uh, workbench here and everything, since as you can see this thing is so huge, it literally takes away all of the space where it's standing. And I wouldn't wouldn't really be able to fit the computer in front of it anymore. Which, uh, yeah, well, I'll just swap it out with the 3D printer. But I'm actually a little bit afraid that the table will fall over since the leg is here and not in the back. But I had some heavier stuff standing back there. So it shouldn't be that much of an issue. And what are you doing? You're just acting up completely crazy. Well, and a couple of screws and one on some of these plastic press uh, things here. They have a pin that goes in, and when that pin goes in, these uh, teeth in the front, they move apart and hold the case on. That all comes apart pretty easily. I have got the case off now, and this is the money shot. Here you can see why this is such a high-end unit. The construction is absolutely beautiful. We have got nice shielding around the uh, tube itself to not cause interference with uh, whatever. And uh, seems like I was wrong with the 20,000 volts. Actually, it's 30,000 volts. Yay! And uh, well, you shouldn't touch that either. So, yeah. Here on the side, we have got a pretty massive power supply. And uh, yeah. All very nicely laid out. This thing is just absolutely beautiful in construction. It's all a little bit dirty. And I already noticed something what I don't like. And that is, well, so far YouTube doesn't offer smell-o-vision, but uh, this thing smells. And like what does it smell, you ask me? Tobacco. Yep, the previous owner was definitely a smoker. You can already see that by the color of the dust on here, since that is uh, brown yellowish and not usual type of just gray. And down here is where all the magic happened. We have got a huge flyback transformer in here. Then we have got all the adjustment stuff for that. <laughs> One separate unit, that's pretty interesting. Haven't seen it like that before. And uh, if we have a look at the board itself, that is all also laid out very nicely. And if we go over to the other side, this is all where more magic happens. We've got a ton of ICs on here, a lot of a lot of stuff, and uh, seems that there are even versions of this TV that can do more, since there are a lot more connectors on here. Or it could just be that those connectors just serve for uh, testing the whole thing without actually uh, powering it fully up. Could be, I don't know, since this is high-end stuff, they usually tend to put more connectors in the whole thing than, is ne than that's necessary. Well, just for testing purposes. So yeah, I've already looked around the whole thing, and it does look that everything is okay, none of the connectors is loose. Well, the thing that I'm most concerned about is the... Uh, Deflection coil right here, and the PCB that is in the back of the vacuum tube here. Down there we have our electron gun, and uh, yeah, seems like I uh, don't have to do anything of cleaning, repairing or whatsoever. This thing looks pretty nice, as it already is right now, and uh, well the dust that is in here it's not much, it's little, but uh, yeah, it's not uh, enough that I would say I would have to actually really go ahead and clean the whole thing hugely intensely, so yeah, that already says 
this thing hasn't been used that often or very long. So, let's put everything back together. I will go ahead and rearrange my whole workbench, which is currently a big mess. And uh, try to put that there where the 3D printer is. And try to arrange everything so that I can even hook up my Amiga to this whole thing. Well, some good news and some bad news. The good news are uh, the whole thing does actually work. And if we have a look, get really close to it, it doesn't really create a flickering on the camera, which is great for a CRT and that is pretty awesome if you want to record something off the screen or so. But uh, the bad thing is, well, uh, this thing has got BNC connectors. And I don't have anything that's at least in one way similar to BNC than oscilloscope probes. And uh, this one here is supposed to just let everything directly through, but I can't uh, get an image with that. And even with a small uh, mod, mod wire, I am still not able to get an image on this machine when I try to hook up my Commodore 64, which is actually quite sad. So, what I've got to do is get myself some BNC to RCA adapters, or either make some, some myself, and then I'll be able to use this beauty. Well, as you can see, I eventually did get that a CCTV monitor to work, and the image on it, it is just absolutely clear. That's as clear as I can get it on the Amiga. Well, I'm still currently using the uh, composite video, so it still will be able to look a little bit weird. For some reason, my camera uh, picks those cubes up as yeah purple. I, in fact, they're actually blue. I can see them as blue. No idea what my camera is doing. <laughs> and yeah, the way I just did that is just I just bought that cable in the BNC connector, and well. It works, but um, I'm definitely going to get myself some adapters. And I'm just testing the whole thing with my Amiga 500. Unfortunately, uh, I have a total of four Amigas. And uh, this will be one of the units... Well, actually the unit I'm uh, going to give away as well. Uh, because I got myself something pretty interesting and uh, I don't... Well, I can only fit a total of four Amigas in my entire collection. Well, space and everything. But I'm definitely going to keep the RAM in and so on. Yeah, this is the revision uh, two, 2015 uh, invitation. Well, the Amiga invitation, of course. And uh, yeah, as someone who was at revision 2015, I can just say that was awesome. It was really, really awesome and I had a lot of fun, met a lot of great people and well, I actually found it quite sad that I didn't have a release because well, I would love to make music on the Amiga but I have to figure out how to use a tracker as first and for someone who is, uh, well, who knows more about the hardware than the software, it's a little bit difficult but I'm starting to get uh, used to it and uh, well, <laughs> So far, well, before it was a revision, I only managed to, uh, well, put notes into the tracker, but didn't manage to get sound out of it. Now, since I've been at revision, a lot of people showed me things that I can do. And uh, now I'm actually able to get sound out of the tracker, which is great. Of course, I'm uh, not uh, practicing with Pro Tracker at first, so I'm doing use a PC based tracker, which is uh, near compatible. That's a good thing about it. But anyways, uh, yeah, just wanted to show you something awesome. I mean, this TV, this monitor is just absolutely ginormous, and it's also weighs a ton. But uh, here's something pretty funny. Yep, up here we have the real uh, common monitor for the Amiga units, the 1084S, which is. Definitely one of the best screen well, monitors you can get for that unit, except if you're going to use a scrap or an RPG out on these things, which I'm definitely going to do with this. And <laughs> just a look at the size comparison between these two. That's, that's what I find pretty uh, uh, interesting. 
So well, here are the BNC to composite adapters. I'm sorry, please excuse the crudity of my voice right now. I just had my wisdom teeth removed, and that's affecting me a little bit at everything. So here they are, made by a company called Inline. And uh, this is how they look like. I bought like 10 of these for about 5 euros. And uh, let's have a look. I put my new 60 C64 up to the display. And uh, the image is just beautiful. For I mean for composite video this is great. This thing can do S video, what the C64 is also capable of. So then it would look even a lot better than that, I guess right now, but it, that is just the best image I've gotten so far out of this machine that I've seen in real life. I was wondering, everything is back here, and that is just a lot better than the weird uh, cable that I stuck in there. That wasn't that good, but uh, it worked, but I got a lot of interference and now it's almost none. Well, there is no interference actually. Since the cable is properly grounded and shielded, so yeah. There you go. It looks beautiful. So if you want a really, really good CRT display, get yourself one of these CCTV displays. If you manage to get hold of one, because they are still pretty expensive and also quite rare. Yeah, I can't, can't pronounce the letter R with that. Sorry. Can't really use my mouth at the moment. Since everything hurts. But uh, yeah, definitely get yourself one of these things. Because that is really, really beautiful. It looks even better on the Amiga, and I'm still using composite video, and that is just an absolutely sharp and clear image. That is just wow. Of course, when I hook up the Amiga with the RGB of this thing, it will be even a lot better. But so far, so good. Yeah. Only problem is this thing again has mono audio, not stereo. <coughs> and uh, yeah, still gotta figure out a way how to get uh, this into stereo. Probably just hooking up another speaker to the whole thing. Shouldn't be too big of an issue, but that image is just beautifully sharp and nice. <laughs> 